As we continue to spend the week with the defense, as we talked with Molly Doyle on the women's side, going to talk defense on the men's side with Jules Godino. And for you guys not playing this past week, I, I know there's rest and recovery, which is a good thing, but you know, this will be the second time where you all have had a little bit of gap time in between a game. How do you all cope with that? Because you know, you're trying to ramp up to Saturday and be ready to play, and then all of a sudden they kind of let the air out of the balloon and you guys don't play. What's it like to have this long gap here in between games? And, oh, by the way, it's Loyola on Saturday. Well, I think uh, last week uh, we kind of figured out the game was going to be canceled about midweek, so we were able to get good t Wednesday and Thursday practice, and we had a little inter-squad scrimmage on Friday. Um, and then we were able to recover over the weekend. So we're just taking, you know, this Loyola week as any other week not really looking at it. We haven't played in, you know, two weeks, so we're taking the same preparation Tuesday, long, long, hard practices, stuff like that. So we uh, try to keep the same routine as we usually do. How hard is that, knowing that the, the caliber of opponent you're facing this week, you know that this can do a lot uh, for your season here. How do you block out all of the, the things that could possibly come with it and just try to focus in on the task at hand on Saturday? Well, I know, uh, at least defensively speaking, we do a pretty good job game plan every week. So going into the game, we, we always feel confident no matter who the opponent is. is sort of our objective. We're usually all, always on the same page. And um, when we're firing all cylinders down there, that um, guys are just ready to go. So I think that, you know, this is obviously a pretty big game. And um, we, we try and take each game, we try and approach it the same way, you know prepare on Tuesday, prepare on Wednesday, and sort of, you know, build things into our practice plan and uh, walk through it on Friday. And, you know, by the time Saturday rolls around, we, we usually feel pretty confident going into the game. When guys are on offense and it's six on six, you know, it's somewhat choreographed, somewhat scripted. When you, Fennell, or Reese become ball carriers, and it's really instinctive at that point, What what is the key when you become a ball carrier all of a sudden, when you get across midfield and you know at some point you've got to make a decision what goes through your all's mind because you the three of you especially do such a good job not only carrying the ball but the decision making at the end whether you need to take the shot or whether you look for that pass that could d develop into a transition goal what's the key to that and, and developing that play properly for you um i think that you sort of as defensemen we we see the play unfolded a little bit differently. You know, we know which defenseman is going to slide to us um, from which spot. So we have a pretty good idea of if this guy's coming to me, you know, I, I'm, I need to make the pass there. So I think from having a defensive mindset is is the key to sort of us being able to play a little bit of a transition offense. You've played lacrosse, I'm sure, for a long time. Have you seen the caliber of athlete? like a Matt Reese and like a Chris Fennell who are playing on defense now. Normally, everybody would probably want to put that guy in the midfield because he can run like a deer and run for days. But to see guys like that and yourself now on defense, because all of you guys can run, you've got great athleticism, it, different to see guys like that now hanging around on the defensive end? Um, I think so. These are some, obviously some of the better players I've ever played with. And um, we, we, you know, we just like, we like bringing that athleticism on the defensive end, just pressing out on guys. You know, we like to... You know, we take a little bit of pride in pushing and, and offensively and in transition, but we I think we take even more pride in being able to make offensive guys uncomfortable and press out on the perimeter. You guys especially, I mean, it seems like all sports now, the rules always cater to the offense, but you all as a team have done such a good job of causing turnovers this year. Is that something that, you know, you all, as you mentioned, game plan-wise, maybe you can attack individual players? Is that something you all sense, or is it just a case of, as you mentioned, just pushing out and, and putting pressure on, on no matter who has the ball for the other team? It's a, it's a little bit of both. Um, we, we play pretty aggressively no matter kind of who the matchup is. So that plays in our favor, getting that guy's hands, maybe forcing that errant pass. But um, we also do sort of try and trap a little bit in our, in our game plan force him into a slide, force him into a double team, not, not let him sort of roll out and, and get a free pass. Um, so that little, that little bit extra that we give um, in our game plan, it, it's helped us you know, create some, get, get the ball on the ground. What did it mean to go to Bucknell and, and not only win, but play such a complete game against the Bison team that has given you all fits for the last few years? Uh, that was a pretty big win. I know for our senior class, I, that meant a lot. It had been about six years since since the Navy team had beaten Bucknell. And um, I know me and Johnny Connors were really excited at the end of the game, um, you know, give each other a big hug. But um, 
you know, it's the same thing as, oh, we, we've gone 0-3 oh, oh against them in our career as well, and we're just, you know, looking forward to Saturday. Do you ever ask a guy like John, what on earth would put you in between two pipes and let people shoot a ball 100 miles an hour at you? No, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> never, never ask him that, because then we're going to have to find a backup. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, but talk about his play. I mean, especially last week. I mean, early in the game, before you all really seized control of the game, he made a couple of uh, humongous saves. And you know at times, just by the nature of the sport, there's going to come 1v1 opportunities where he's going to have to mm -hmm. come up big. How much does that give you all a lift as a team when you see him do that? Yeah, I think, you know, there's times where John O'Bell said, I know against Bucknell, he had one right on the on the backside and right on the doorstep, and he just stuffed the kid, and, and you just go, where's the ball? And you just, you know, you're trying to pick it up and get it down the other end, and, and it's just such a relief to, to know that your goalie can bail you out like that because, you know, we've talked a little bit about our defense being good today, but... Um, having John bail us out when, when we mess up is, you know, we, we really complement each other, and, and it's it's been a good match. When you look at the schedule you all play, as an individual player yourself, and, and you kind of look out there, do you ever get a chance to appreciate, like, you know, wow, I'm, I'm starting A on a Division One team, and, and look at the caliber of people that I'm playing against. Do you ever get a, a chance to enjoy that sense of accomplishment that you've worked hard enough to get into the starting lineup and play at a program that's playing the likes of, of Ryan Brown and, and those types of players on a day-in and day-out basis. Yeah, I think that um, it's it's definitely an honor to you know step on the field with some of the guys I'm playing with, and and especially some of the opponents as well. Names you remember kind of hearing about in high school, names you kind of remember hearing about you know as you've been playing throughout your career. So it, it is it is pretty cool to to kind of stack up and you know see how you can compete against some of these guys. Um, yeah. Why the Naval Academy for you? Um. You know, at first I didn't really want to come. My parents made me come visit, and uh, <laughs> I liked the team, I liked the guys, and uh, it, it, it seemed like a good opportunity, and, and I liked how they played ball here. I know everybody watching is probably wondering, what's the Band-Aid for? Uh, yeah, it was just uh, practice, you know, just getting after it a little See, bit. That's, but that's what I think as a, as a person, a lacrosse fan, you got to appreciate that, the fact that if you practice hard, and Coach has talked about that a little bit. He said the week of practice you all had before the Bucknell game, was exceptional. Mm -hmm. You guys practice at a really high level. Do you believe that that truly translates from the practice week to the game field on Saturday more, more often than not? Yeah, I, mean, I can remember last year going up against Loyola. We had a terrible week of practice and we got blown out by 10 goals. So I know that as a senior class, we're, we're trying to make sure that we get a good week of practice in. All right, big fella. Appreciate the time. We'll see you on Saturday as you Thank all you. take on the Greyhounds. Sounds good. All right, Jules Godino joining us here. And, of course, as always, for ticket information and that schedule all year long, you can get it for all 33 varsity sports. Just go to www.navysports.com.